If you're already tracking your customer information or your invoice information in Airtable, wouldn't it be nice if your payment information showed up there automatically as well? Without all this manual entry, this is very possible with a nice integration in Zapier. In this video, I'm gonna be breaking down for you how to build payment automation so that you don't have to go in between your different software tools and you can work from one place and have real updated information at all times. If learning more about payment automation is of interest to you, stick around and let's get into it. Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Gareth and this is Gap Consulting. It's my mission here to help you unlock the full potential of no-code tools. And one of my favorite no-code tools is of course Airtable, which in this video we're gonna be integrating with Stripe thanks to the help of Zapier. Now, before we get into the heart of things, I first want to invite you to join me for some Airtable templates. If you're kind of new to Airtable and you're kind of just learning the ropes, or if you are ready to maybe take your Airtable skills to the next level, we've put together a series of templates for you and you can download them absolutely free at gapconsulting.io slash templates. Pop in your email address and we'll send those templates right to you with some instructional videos on how to get started. But without further ado, let's hop on into the heart of things here. And as I mentioned, we're gonna be looking at automating payments. And in our case, we're gonna be using Stripe, but of course the same principles that we're gonna walk through here today apply based on whatever different payment processor you're using, assuming of course that they have a Zapier integration. This might be a good point at which we should discuss exactly what Zapier is, just in case you're not already leveraging this tool in your business. So Zapier is kind of like the glue of the internet, if you will, and it'll allows you to pass information from different cloud-based software and move that information from one place to another. So in our example here, we're gonna be talking about how we can take information from Stripe, or as I said, really any payment processor that talks to Zapier, and we're gonna move that information into Airtable and update information in Airtable. So the first thing we need to understand here is really how Stripe works. So let's go ahead and pop on into my Stripe here. You can see I'm in a test uh, demo account for my actual Gap Consulting Stripe. And if you ever wanna do this too, you know, if you're following along, just pop on test mode here, and that allows you to kind of play behind the scenes without showing any of your real data or anything like that. So first we'd wanna add a customer. And anytime we have a customer inside of Stripe, uh, they usually have at a minimum a couple of things. So I'm gonna use myself as an example here. I'll pop in my email address. And just like that, these are the two main components that you really have to have for anybody that you're adding to Stripe, right? In fact, I don't even know that you need a name in all cases. Uh, I think I do have folks that uh, aren't tied to a name in my actual Stripe. I try to keep that to a minimum, but it happens. Uh, an email address though is absolutely vital. It's one of the keys, if you will, that Stripe uses as it you know finds people in your system. Of course, you can fill out a lot more information when you're creating customers in Stripe, but let's keep it simple for our basic example here. And I'm gonna add this customer. And once I do, we're gonna go into that customer to view them. Them. And this is important because we're going to find that we have an ID automatically created for the customer. Stripe makes it super easy for you to view this information and you can also easily copy it to the clipboard. Every customer ID in Stripe is automatically assigned when a customer is created in Stripe. This is really important because we're gonna use this ID to find the customer inside of our database. Because when we do a search, you know, if we receive a payment and we wanna record that payment back in Airtable, we wanna make sure that it's connected to the person who made the payment. And in order to do that, we need to make sure that we have some sort of identifier that we use to search for that person. So this might be a good point at which we can pause here and flip into Airtable and take a look at just a really basic back end here. So on one hand, I'm gonna have my customer's table because every payment is made by someone. And we wouldn't put this information in the same table as the transactions because it's linked, it's related. We wanna be able to track over time, hey, this customer bought from us multiple times, their lifetime value or the amount they've spent with us over the years has grown, right? And so we don't wanna record individual transactions or rows for that customer. We wanna have one object for the customer in our database, which we do by creating a customer here in our database. And I can do the exact same things here that I did in Stripe. I have the name, I have the email, I can drop that in here as well. 
And then lastly, we have that Stripe customer ID. So right now I'm doing this very manually, right? I'm going in here, I'm copying this to my clipboard, I'm pasting it back in Airtable, but this step right here can be fully automated. So in order to do this, we could pop into Zapier and we would say, well, of course, the triggering event is the thing that starts the automation. So a Zap in Zapier is an automated workflow and every single one of these will always kick off with some sort of triggering event, the thing that awakens the automation and sets it about its business. So in this case, we always have to pick what tool we're going to use as the trigger, what software is triggering this action. And in this case, it's Stripe. So we're gonna pop into Stripe and we could say something like, uh, you know, what are the different events available? And so you can see that we can scroll down in here and find all these different options. We could set up a rule that says, if a new customer is added to Stripe, then I want to take action. And so we could do this very simply by saying new customer in Stripe, we would set it up to our account. Of course, uh, in our example, we're using a demo account, but we would select the account here. We would tie it in. We would find the new customer in Stripe. And then what are we going to do with it? We're going to talk to Airtable. So after the new customer is added in Stripe, we go to Airtable. We can look for the customer. And I prefer to do a find record here. We can connect to an account here. I'll make a selection here. And of course, this particular account is only going to show us one database. You have to make sure that your integration from Zapier, the way it's communicating with Airtable, has the right permissions to access the databases in Airtable that you want it to see. But let's go over here. And when we see the bases, this is the name of the database that I'm working from for this example, Stripe integration. So I can choose that. And then I say, well, the uh, customer was created in Stripe. Of course, I want to interact with the customer's table. I want to see, find the customer. Do they already exist here in Airtable? And we can use a field to search by. So again, in Stripe, this customer just came into existence. So we don't already have the customer ID in Airtable in this example. Uh, so what we would want to search by would be email, something that we might already have. So we could say, hey, we already have this customer object in Airtable. We just don't know that they've been created in Stripe yet. So we could set up a rule here that says, well, I'm going to search by the email. Now I need to map the email from Stripe to the email in Airtable because we're using the email field in Airtable here that we're comparing to see, does this exist already in Airtable? So we have the email from Stripe. Let's go ahead and open up. And this is from our first step. This is the email address from that new customer. And we can search that email address from Stripe and we'll look in Airtable to see if we already have that email address. And if we do, uh, then great. We already know that they're there and we can update that record with the Stripe customer ID. And if we don't already have that record, well, then what do we do? We want to create that record in Airtable. So we can toggle on right here. This is one of my favorite Zapier features. We perform a search, and if we don't find what we're looking for, then we can just create it, which is perfect. Super easy to build that workflow. We say create that Airtable record, and we'll bring in the name of the person from Stripe right here. We'll bring in any transactions they have, but we'll take care of that in a further step. Of course, we'll include that email address. And then we will also, importantly, include that Stripe customer ID. So we can do all of that. We continue. Now, if we do find the record, of course, we also want to then update that customer ID. So we'll take care of that in the very next action step. But right now, we're going to perform a quick test. We're going to search. And of course, we're going to receive a green light from Zapier here that says, yes, we found this customer because, of course, Back in Airtable, we know that there is a customer with this email address. Easy enough. So back here in Stripe again, as I said, as our final step, we will then update that because if we find the record, instead of creating the record, but we just find it, then we need to still go back in and update with that Stripe customer ID. So again, we'll map to Airtable here. That's the app that we're using or the software for this last step. We're going to update a record. So I'll come down here, update a record in a specific table. We'll continue. I'll choose my base. Of course, I have Stripe integration here. The table is still customers. I know the record. And so don't get your Stripe customer ID confused with your Airtable record ID. They are both identifiers used by the two different software, but the Stripe customer ID comes from Stripe. And of course, we're including it in Airtable as a lookup key for later. 
but we also have the Airtable record IDs as well. So right here, we don't want static information coming in. We don't want to use the same record ID every time. We want to use whatever the record ID was from the last step, whatever record we found previously. In order to get that, we just come in here, we hit the custom, and over here we will say, we found a record in Airtable, we know what the record ID is, Automatically, Zapier knows that from when it performed the search. And all we need to do now is update that Stripe customer ID. So again, we'll map to that customer ID. Notice that this is all point and click. I'm not including any code here whatsoever. I'm just logically mapping the information where I need it to go. And that's it. I can test this step. It's going to be updating that Airtable data with the customer ID, which is perfect. So this is a great start. We have the automation now in place that allows us to, when a new customer is created in Stripe, add them here to Airtable. And if they already exist in Airtable, then what we're going to do is just map properly to their Stripe customer ID. That way we have this key that we can use in the future. So how can we use this further? Well, we've talked about the customer having an ID in Stripe, but payments also have their own payment ID in Stripe as well. So over here, let's go ahead and create an invoice for this person. And we can just, you know, choose a currency, US dollars. We can make it uh, whatever we want. Let's make it a design deposit for $2,000 and we can enter this. Again, I'm in a test account here, but ultimately I would then send this invoice. Of course, this is going to send an invoice to this person. It's an example invoice in this case. And the invoice has an ID as well. So now in Stripe, I'm inside of the invoice that we just sent and it has an ID. If you are sending invoices, you might want to map these invoices back to Airtable. So over here in Airtable, you'll see our second table of transactions and we could add a transaction. We would say this is a $2,000 transaction and we would bring in that invoice ID right here. Again, I'm using a text field. This invoice ID is really helpful because when the invoice gets paid, we of course can look it up in Airtable just as we did the customer earlier. We could look it up in this case using the invoice ID and figure out what we're updating via automation. Also here, we have the payment ID. This is the next layer here. So we could look at this payment page. Okay, so flipping back into Stripe into the example information here, we can pop this open. And let's say we wanted to just close this out, right? I could enter in a fake card here. And this allows you for testing inside of uh, Stripe at any point, you can use all four twos, make sure you pick an expiration date that's in the future. So I'll go with um, August 28 and uh, we'll just enter in 999 for that security code. Of course, I'll give a fake zip code as well and we should be good with that. So let's go ahead and pay the 2000. Of course, again, this is just for demo purposes. This is not actually going to process anything because this is a demo account. We're in test mode and we're using a credit card that is for testing purposes. It's not a real live credit card. So we can say pay that 2000. Of course, now my uh, browser wants me to save this information, which I don't want to do. This is not a card. Uh, but now for testing purposes in test mode, we show an invoice being paid. So let's pop back into Stripe and take a look at what this looks like. We can go to our transactions now and you can see that we have processed this payment. Of course, we have the payment method here, but we never see the actual payment method. We never see the actual account or anything like that. That is our customer's private information. And of course, we don't actually want to see that. But here's what we do get on the inside. Look at all of this very important ID information. I have the payment ID, critical. I have the customer ID, very important. And if I keep scrolling down, I will find that invoice ID as well. So here are all the different components we've been talking about, right? The invoice ID, the customer ID, and up at the top, the payment ID. Because we're actually saying, hey, I can pull back to any one of these different things. There are three different objects inside of Stripe, and I can automate around that. So another automation that I might build if I were to head back into Zapier would be to say, hey, uh, what else can I do inside of a trigger from Stripe? So if we look again at that list of events, we have canceled subscriptions, a checkout session complete, a failed payment. Like I can update 
automated workflows from all of these things. And if you're running e-commerce and you're not integrated with Zapier, you're really missing out. Imagine having failed payments, sending messages to your team so that you could follow up. Uh, same thing with invoice payment failed. Or one of my favorites, just a new charge. There's been a new charge. A new charge was completed. We're going to take some action. We're going to look for the client or the customer inside of our Airtable base because we know the customer ID which we already walked through. Then I'm going to create a new transaction in my transaction table right over here. I can link that transaction to the customer that made the payment all thanks to automation. So as you can see, there is a world of possibility here as you're integrating your payment processing with whatever tools you're using. Again, of course, be sure you're not storing any sensitive information here, but if you're looking to create some sort of dashboard for yourself, a way for your team to track payments, follow up, especially if you're already using a tool like Airtable to store other parts of your customer journey, this is a no brainer. I hope you got a ton of value from this video. Of course, if you did, please be sure to give us a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel and check out the tools that we've been using. It's a great way for you to show love back to the channel if you use the affiliate links we shared here. If you need any help setting this up, we have a ton of other resources on our website, including some hourly consulting options. So feel free to swing on by and get the help you need. But most importantly, my friends, keep on building.